Seeing, seeing that we have a history, sadly, in this country where in the past we've had allegations of the executive inflating budgets, mm -hmm. could that not have been a move by the National Assembly to say, okay, let's, this might have been an inflation? No, they probably, I, I, I mean, we, they have three hearings, like you said, I mean, three, city, three mm -hmm. readings with a public hearing. I mean, yes. it goes through the entire process. They probably must have, to an extent, hopefully done their research and probably said, okay, this, there's some inflation here. Mm -hmm. Let's try and nip this in the ball before mm. it gets out there. Couldn't yes. that be an, a, a, a possibility? That's what is expected of the National Assembly anyway. That's what is expected of them, to checkmate and, you know, get it. And that is why they have oversight function, before, during, and after the execution of any um, project or, uh, or contract. So I believe those are the things that they should look into, rather than now introducing things that were not part of it, that were not even thinking, that are not even the duties of those ministries. Primary health center, boreholes. There are a lot of boreholes scattered around every constituency, local governments and areas in this country that are not even functioning. The House of Assembly member elected from a state does borehole as his constituency project. House of Rep borehole. Um, the, the senators borehole. You know, they are all scattered everywhere. The chairman, local government chairman, go ahead, construct borehole to different communities. So these things are just scattered everywhere and some, most of them are not functioning. Primary health center is something that we should um, allow the local government to, even to, to, to do, if not even the state government. It should be under the concurrent or residual list, not exclusively, not taking the, pro the project or monies or appropriation from federal projects that have been studied that are critical to the economic take, growth take, of this taking country. Taking it to politics now, how much yeah. of this uh, is an indictment on the APC? I mean, they have an overwhelming majority in, in both houses mm. in the National Assembly. The executive is APC run. How much of it is, is a problem of the party manifesting itself? Yes, well, like the minister has said, I think there is a need for a kind of to seek a resolution with the national members of the National Assembly. Unfortunately, the spokesmen are just trying to, you know, do, drop names, you know, name callings and, you know, trying to twist the whole thing. But again, it is very, very important that the, the, the party, the APC, the ruling party, calls all this, calls everybody together. You know, the vice president, the, sorry, the acting president and everybody that is involved. The acting president protested, you know, by not signing the, um, the budget initially when it was brought to fore. Later, they said there was a kind of um, agreement, you know, a kind of arrangement that it could be, monies could be allocated to those projects through environment. Later, if the executive wishes to bring those things. But why do we need to go through those delays? You know, this, 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 um, the issues are in, in different um, segments or the items now. Lagos Ibadan Expressway is one. Now we have the second Niger Bridge. They said the reason why they removed um, five billion from the money or five billion from the money was that 2016 budget, 12 billion was allocated and it was returned. If not for the clarification of the minister, a lot of people would thought that well, 12 billion was given to them. They now watched it, didn't do anything with they it, and they carried it the 12 billion and took <laughs> it back to the National Assembly. But the truth of the matter is that it was just a, a, a kind of estimation where money is supposed to be released by the Minister of Finance. Unfortunately, for whatever reasons or reasons best, best known to, to the um, Finance Ministry, though it, there were explanations by the um, Minister you know, regarding that, that when the, money, when the um, budget was passed in May 2016, the water level where the bridge is supposed to be um, constructed, uh, constructed was too high for works to be done. Now, there are different levels of works that have been done, different phases, you know, um, foundation and piling and all that that have been done. Now, the fourth stage is what they are. I'm trying to go into details into what, what actually happened, the yeah. words of the minister. So now, if that is the case, and there was no time, no enough time for things to be done in that case, and the money was returned. Why I should think that be an issue? Yeah, it, it should not be an yeah. issue. It was well, represented, and things should, I think the National Assembly should not cutting down the money. Yeah. Well, we'll take a break now. We'll come back. We'll conclude our conversation and see if there's a way forward for Nigeria, which is the most important entity in all of this. We'll see you back in a moment. All right, you're welcome back. We're talking about the 2017 budget and the drama between the executive and the National Assembly. Um, I want to talk about um, Honorable Abdelmoumin Jibrin now, who last year, you know, came out and spoke 
extensively about budget padding, mm -hmm. and he was the head of the appropriation committee as well in the National yes. Assembly. So, by all means, we should believe that he knew what he was talking about. Yes. He ended up with him being suspended from the House of Representatives and all the drama that came with it. Is this sort of an indictment on him now? I'm not saying the budget has been padded, but he talked about you know the budget process as a whole and why it needs to be reviewed. Mm -hmm. And we're back again with drama this year. Is this an indictment on, on, on all the things he said? Well, um, a lot of things were put in place after the embarrassing episode of that, of that padding, of the padding of 2016 budget. You know, right from the presidency, there was an appointment of a DG on budget matters. Uh, the former economic um, uh, commissioner in Lagos State, budget and economic commissioner in Lagos State. And a lot of things were put in place. They were very careful. You know, the accusation from the National Assembly was that um, the, uh, the padding emanated from the executive. But from what Abdul Mumin said, we all saw it. He indicted himself and every other person in the... In the, uh, in the National Assembly, you know, for that um, crime, you know, of padding of the budget. So I believe everybody was careful about um, um, falling into that trap because a lot of things were, were at stake. So I, I believe, again, that brought about this issue of um, distortion of budgets. You know, if padding could not be uh, as, uh, attained the way it was monumentally in 2016, then perhaps some people thought distort distorting the budget is one um, way to go. Yeah. Those that are, that are hungry to get more than what they deserve, what they should get. Yeah. So I believe that is what, uh, that is what is happening. The, 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 the National yeah. Assembly, anyway, um, increased their allocation from $115 billion in the 2016 budget to $125 billion. So I believe those, I things, should ac members, those yeah. things should account for their borehole and their constituency project and every other thing. Why taken from this critical national project that determines the economic growth of this country that everybody is clamoring for? These are roads and projects. The Mambila Power Project is one other aspect. Again, 17 billion era. They said 17 billion era was quoted as EIA, um, Environmental Inspire Assessment, Impact Assessment um, money. But the minister has come out and said, no, that money, there was a misdescription of the heading of that budget, of that, um, the, the, the project. It's actually, the 17 million is actually the counterpart funding for the China Exim Bank that is sponsoring the road. But the federal government has to have a counter, counterpart funding, which is the 17 billion. I believe the National Assembly should have summoned the minister, you know, sitting down and say, this, 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 and this, in an open session. You know, we discover this in your budget, we discover that in your budget. How did that come about? If you could not give a good explanation, then you can. Take whatever step you can you want to take. I mean, it's 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 quite interesting that it's July and uh, we're talking about the budget in 2017, in the second half of the year. But on the final note, very quickly, yes, what's the way forward? Well, the way forward is this: if the National Assembly can swallow the pride, like I said, the spokespersons I believe are speaking for themselves. I want to believe that. But if the National Assembly wants to go about it, there should be a deliberate effort by the National Assembly to. Um, rewrite or to rescind whatever decision they've taken as a result of this, um, that brought about this distortion and also call the minister and have a kind of agreement. If you want to introduce something that the minister or the executive has overlooked in your body and you feel is important, there's nothing wrong in going through the executive and having a kind of good agreement. Well, thank that. you very yes. much, Ahmed, for being here today. Okay. Hopefully people who should be listening are listening. I mean, 2018 mm -hmm. is around the corner and hopefully we don't go through this yet again. Mm -hmm. It's been our, our story for the last 16, 17 years and we should outgrow that by now. Thanks for being here today. Thank you like so I always much say, you can having... follow the conversation on Twitter at yeah. TV is the handle. The hashtag to follow is dropping minds. You can also visit the website TV. Remember, you've never seen young people talk like this before. I'll see you next week.